everyone and welcome back to the 48th annual Sun and Fun International Expo. I'm Ben Coleman, your anchor host here for the Florida Aviation Network coming to you live and in the clear. Look that up if you don't know what that means. I'm not going to tell you. But we're coming to you from the Central Florida Aerospace Academy. And these, uh, this is James C. Ray uh, was the benefactor that started this high school here at the Sun and Fun campus. We bring to you the, the compelling safety message with our staff of volunteers. And we're here because we love aviation. And we love to talk with people that have either an interest or a shared love of aviation. And that's why we have today racers. We've got some racers here. Would you like to meet some aviation racers? We've got racers. We have Rochelle, Caitlin, Jensen. These ladies race airplanes. And uh, I want to know to what level we race, how we race, when we race, what we race in, and what we intend to achieve in our races. <clears throat> Rochelle, Caitlin, Jensen, welcome to, to Florida Aviation Network. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about, and then one, two, three, I'll try to get, keep it in order. Rochelle, what is the Air Race Classics? And it's, is this for men and women? Negative. <clears throat> this is a women's air race, and it's an annual event, and the locations and the routes change every year, and this year it happens to start here at Lakeland. And when does this start? We will be departing Lakeland on June 21st. Okay. And how long does this race take? Well, we have to arrive at our destination, which is Terre Haute, Indiana, within four days. Good grief. That's a long ways away. It is. It's actually a total of 2,955 round trip because it includes 10 different states that we have to either stop at or do flyovers at. Wow. And Rochelle, this, and, and I'm going to play ignorant, and it's really easy for me to play ignorant. Hey, I heard a snicker back there. No, no. The, uh, tell me what, how many aircraft, what type of aircraft, and what's your structure? Uh, is it a crew of one, crew of two, crew of two with a backup, observer, or, or what? what is the mix of airplanes and pilots that we have involved here? Well, all of, obviously every team member is a female. Um, we have myself as PIC, uh, Caitlin is the co-pilot, and Jensen is our navigator. So we'll, we'll all three be in the aircraft. We're going to be flying a Cessna 210. And I think m m the, from what I've heard, the majority of the teams are going to be flying a 172 or something smaller. So all of the aircrafts are handicapped prior to the start of the race. Okay, and the handicap is based on speed. Uh, is this an average cruise speed or is this the published cruise speed? The it's actually required full throttle. Okay, so at full throttle, that's the speed that you are, uh, that you use as a handicap. So, right. So you could get there first, but you may not be the winner. Right. So the idea yeah. is to beat the time that we are expected to arrive. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, uh, um, Jensen's going to help us out with a lot of the navigation and determining the altitudes, what winds are going to be the most beneficial. Mm -hmm. Well, and since Jensen was the primary one that said, I don't want to have any questions asked to me. Congratulations. <laughs> Jensen, how much flight time do you have? I currently have 1.3 hours logged. 1.3 hours. That, that, and I, I used this before. That's precious. It really is. Because you're at the very, at the very beginning of your career in aviation. And uh, again, you asked me not to ask you what you intended to do with your career. What do you intend to do with your career, Jensen? <laughs> well, I'm not sure yet. I know I want to become a pilot, but I also know that I want to fix planes and work on them. Oh, A and P? Yes, sir. Maintenance? Yes, sir. Let me see your hands. Okay. All right. You, all right. You, you're going to be a you're going to be a fine one. I tell you, because I love to see. And don't take me. This is not wrong. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I will anyway. Uh, the long, pretty f fingernails, <laughs> they come in really handy for picking up washers. Oh, yeah. But it's really nasty when you start to get safety wire poked in them and you start breaking one. And so, uh, honestly, uh, my fingernails are a little bit long, but it, we got to get some grease under those nails. 
because that, that helps your nails grow. It really does. Caitlin, you're, uh, you're working on your commercial pilot's license. Yes, sir, here at Polk State College. Excellent. And you have, we discussed a little bit better than 200 hours? Yep. What primarily in? Uh, Cessnas, 172 and 152. I okay. just recently started flying the Pipers. And you may be getting some 210 time here pretty soon. Yes, I have to be endorsed by Rochelle. She's a CFI, and it's a high performance and complex aircraft. Wow, this is just so exciting. I mean, talking about airplanes and high performance and complex. And uh, Rochelle, is there, what do you do? Because you got four days uh, to make it to Terre Haute? Yes. And during those four days, what happens if you come across some weather? It is required that we remain VFR for the flight. So that's part of the planning, part of the strategy. And it's full VFR, not marginal VFR, and no specials getting in and out of airports? Or that's, that's you correct. stay strictly VFR? Yes. Uh, those four days could turn out to be six days. I mean, it just, it just but it's whatever your navigator comes up with. <laughs> And uh, have you ordered uh, good weather for the trip? Of course. Okay. It's the first thing on my list. <laughs> and navigation-wise, uh, what do you? What's your primary instrument that you use for navigation? I'll most likely be looking at METARs from different airports, seeing what the weather is, and different um, winds aloft charts and stuff like that. And you're watching your prog charts, and oh, of course. And you you probably have one of these. Oh yeah. Okay. And that's where you're going to pretty much uh, give the flight crew. You can anticipate, you know, winds at this level, yep. and you're going to pick their altitudes, uh, which are going to be more favorable for your uh, most distance covered across the Earth. Um, what else do you guys do as far as your pre-flight planning? Because it takes a lot of planning for this: fuel, uh, layovers, stopovers, RONs, remain overnights. How much planning goes into this? We've already started the planning and we're building what we're calling a magic binder. So this is something that we're working on as a team, but Jensen's kind of keeping the binder, make sure everything is up to date and um, all of, we have a mother bird who is someone that's an experienced racer mm -hmm. um, that can tell us kind of suggestions of what to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're, we're taking a lot of good input from her and kind of putting our own twist on it to see what we feel would be best for us and our aircraft and our team. How many teams are there involved with this air race? I believe there are currently 52 teams that are registered. 52? 52. 52. That's a lot of teams. And are we all talking about teams of three? No, I think it's a maximum of four. Um, but a minimum of two because you are required to have a co-pilot. Okay, and that makes sense. And uh, the 210 is a little bit more forgiving on weight and balance as opposed to 172. Right. Taking three people. Right. Uh, yeah, that's Plus that's, our luggage. So. Well, luggage is nothing but a toothbrush and, uh, and a hurt and a, and a comb right. or a brush. Right. Can't say comb anymore. <laughs> well, I we don't have, have any worries about that. Some emergency equipment that is mandatory in the aircraft. Do tell. We have to have water purifiers, uh, all-purpose weather clothing, tents, tie-downs, other emergency equipments like flares. Because there's a possibility because there's a lot of uh, real estate between here and Terre Haute. And of course you're going to be always over a highway and near a, a, a Motel 6 or a <laughs> Holiday Inn. <laughs> not so much. Maybe not. Uh, what happens if you're in a single engine aircraft? What happens when it gets quiet? What happens when it goes quiet? Quiet as in you don't no hear the motor. propeller anymore? Yeah, no motor. Well, then you're going to have to do what you have to do, do your emergency landing. Uh, we haven't fully discussed that, but I think at that point you're disqualified. Because you're only allowed to land at the airports mm -hmm. that are specified. At that point, I don't think I would be concerned. <laughs> That's what I was saying. We haven't <laughs> talked about that yet. But, yeah. but uh, worst case scenario, uh, and, and you do have to discuss the, the worst case. Mm -hmm. You go down in uh, one of all times, uh, you're, you drop off of, and I'm, I know that people are going to be watching you. Uh, yes, there's trackers in the aircraft. 
but at, at ADSB is mm -hmm. going to be letting us know where you are all the time. But things happen, things go out, and then all of a sudden you have to go down, and you have to put it down in the field somewhere. Well, that's okay. The ELT will set that off. And the ELT's not working. You may uh, may be out there for days if nobody sees you go down. So what do we do? Do we walk out? Uh, cell phone coverage. There's no cell towers where you went down. Now what do we do? I don't think we'll be out there for days because we're expected at one of the stops. Not well, only the trackers that the race puts in there, mm -hmm. but the ADSB as well. Okay. And if we don't show up or call out a flyby, they're going to be like, well, they left the last airport and they're not at this airport. We need to go find them. Caitlin, I'm trying to get you to come out and say you're going to take a <laughs> stick and you have to have to find a, a, a squirrel or a rabbit to eat. I mean, I've, I've from up north, I've done that. Okay. But yeah, I don't think it'll be that bad. One of the required objects is a fire starter, right? Yes. Fire starter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's just, it's really, really exciting that you're getting involved in this aspect of aviation that a lot of people never do. I mean, that it's just the air race. They think, oh, you must be a daredevil. Well, to a point, we are daredevils if you're flying and leaving the earth and going up into the, in the sky, the heavens. But what else can we learn about, and this is Lady Aces, I just want to bring that up. I'm, I'm so proud of your, uh, your efforts here. But Lady Aces, Lakeland Lady Aces, tell me where that came from, Michelle. So we actually opened name suggestions up to our staff and volunteers here at the Aerospace Center for Excellence. And we wanted to incorporate, because we are funded by the Lakeland Aero Club as well as the Aerospace Center for Excellence. So we wanted to have a name that incorporated both of the organizations and really spoke to who we are as in the community here in Lakeland. Yeah, you're so involved. You, you resemble a lady that sets up all of the scholarships for the uh, Aerospace Center for Excellence. Yes, I know her very well. Oh, that's good. You, you guys could be twins. That's a joke because she is the lady that sets it up. But the uh, and ladies are uh, don't let this get out. This is a secret. You know, sometimes ladies or women make better pilots than men. That's what I've heard. Because they're not that much more dedicated. Their attention to detail. There's not so much bravado and testosterone floating around. Uh, but it's it's a pleasure to have the the on-site, and I can see this one on the end. She, uh, at 1.3 hours, you guys are gonna be, is there any competition about who's gonna do something first, or I'm gonna get my CFI, or I'm gonna, any competition going on? I don't think so, because she's already a CFI. <laughs> <laughs> you're work, but you're going to get. Commercial. I'm almost done with commercial. Okay, but after you get some more experience, yes. then you're going to want to go for your CFI. Yes, I'm already in CFI classes. Jensen, we don't know what you want to do. <laughs> you got 1.3 hours, but heck, you might be an IA before you get the rest of your training. Um, this 1.3 hours, mm -hmm. what was that in? Um, what aircraft? It was in a Cherokee. Cherokee P28. 140, 151, 161, 181. <laughs> it was uh, a, it's Cherokee. Yes, sir. Got it. Yeah. You're, uh, what do you intend to solo when you get to your solo level? What would you like to solo? I'm most likely going to solo in the Cherokee, but okay. once I solo, then I'm going to be flying in a Tomahawk. Okay, good. Good to fun little airplane. Uh, it, it, we'll uh, after we get off the ground, I'll share a story with you <laughs> on the tomahawk. The uh, what else can we learn, and where do we go to learn more to keep track of you guys? And is there a website? Is there some place where they could follow these fifty-two aircraft that are absolutely? At least 52? So the Air Race Classic, like Caitlin was saying, does give us a bad elf, so we can be traceable through the Air Race Classic website. And Jensen is also doing a lot of social media posts through the Lakeland Aero Club's Instagram and Twitter accounts. And, and uh, again, give this to us one more time. Uh, which, which website are we gonna go to watch this? The Air Race Classic actually has an official tracking, um, some kind of system, I'm not sure how it's how it works yet, but 
Um, I know they give us a bad elf, so there is an official tracking device from the Air Race Classic, but we're also posting things on the Lakeland Aero Club, as well as the Aerospace Center for Excellence website, which is aceedu.org. Uh, and this is a community event too, so we're going to be out here the week leading up to the race in June, mm -hmm. and then we would love for the community to come out and see us off on June 21st. Are you excited? When you introduced us as racers, I was like, ooh, I never thought of that, but that is really cool. We are very excited. Well, and, it, and there's so much in this, in this industry, and, uh, and Rochelle, you know, you've been hanging around for a while. And Caitlin, yes. you are, how long have you been involved in, in aviation? In less than a year. Wow. And you've, less, and you've got 200 hours less than I a year? I started flying two weeks after the last Sun and Fun. Wow. Okay. I have jumped right in. <laughs> Jensen, you know where this is going. I'm going to ask you the same question. How long have you been involved in aviation? Um, probably since I was very young. My grandfather got me into aviation, but I've gotten more into it since I have uh, enrolled into Central Florida Aerospace Academy. Mm -hmm. So I am a junior this year, so three years of intense aviation. Excellent. But, and when you were younger, your grandfather kind of introduced you or got you in interested in it, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But how old were you when you kind of first, oh, cool, airplane? <laughs> uh, I was probably about seven or eight. Okay. Something around there. So we could say you almost, I don't know, say cut your teeth, but you, you were in, involved with it a lot sooner than, and no disrespect, Caitlin. No, not Caitlin. Okay. The, uh, but how did you come across the interest in aviation? So I was, I've always loved airplanes, but I'm from New Jersey and we don't have airports near us and I have nobody aviation in my family. One day I found out about Polk State. I came down here to visit. A week later I moved out here and started that day. Excellent. Haven't stopped since. Okay, well, unfortunately, I'm, I hate to say this. Sorry to let you know. You got the bug. I do. Yeah. I really, really, really you do. Bit, you got bit hard. I even quit my job to fly more. Yeah, uh, it's bad. I, I, <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> I think you're going to make it. I think you're going to make it. Jensen, uh, and, and think, oh wait, let, let me double back to Caitlin. Do you have any interest in working on airplanes? No. Can I interest <laughs> you in learning about working on airplanes? Well, yeah, you have to know a certain aspect. Okay. in order to fly. All right, yeah. so uh, future reference next time I ask you that question, are you have an interest in working on airplanes? Yes, sir, I do. Only what they make me learn. <laughs> yeah. You know how to put the oil <laughs> in and, you know, only the stuff I need to know to fly. Wrong answers, Caitlin. <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> no, uh, because it's, it's really, I would love for all of you, including Rochelle, to be ultimate airmen. The ultimate airmen, and I don't mean that it's, it's a universal code. Airmen, you know, that's both positive male and female. Uh, the ultimate airman is a mechanic pilot or a pilot mechanic uh, because you can never know. The only time that I know too much about an airplane is when it's on fire. I, that's, that's the only time that I know too much about that airplane. Other than that, I want to know everything about that airplane. I want to know its control cable tensions. I want to know how many pulleys are in the system. I want to know where it goes from a bell crank to a push-pull tube. Uh, I want to know what the pressure settings are for the fuel servos. I want to know what kind of spark plugs are going in it. Uh, are they going to be BY automated type or massive electro, uh, just standard? You see where I'm going with this. I guess Jensen will have to teach me on our four-day trip. <laughs> we'll have uh, a lot of time. Actually, okay. what they don't know yet is that we have an annual scheduled scheduled next month or um, s next week actually? April. Okay. And it, it's going to be an owner assisted annual. She Ooh. gets to get her hands dirty. So she? we are all going to learn quite intensively. Surprise. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, Jensen, make sure she gets to pack the left outboard wheel bearing. Okay. <laughs> oh, definitely will do that. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, I, uh, folks, I can't tell you how much. Uh, I have enjoyed learning about uh, the Air Race Classics, and we're going to be watching, and I'm sure social media will. Uh, Jensen's going to make sure that we all know what's going on, where you are, 
Uh, all we need really is tag your in number. We can track you on uh, FlightAware. Right. And it's, uh, what is that in number? That would be 2239 or 6. 2239 or 6? Well, that just rolls right off the tongue. 2239 or 6. Yes. Is that a special in number or is that a just what happened to be on the. It bird? was what was on it when I became a partner in it. Well, we have to get you a vanity in number, you know, something like a, a Romeo it's Foxtrot. Or maybe something with L A C A C E. A Lima Alpha. <laughs> Lima Alpha. Lima Alpha. Yeah. One uh, Lima Alpha. Okay. Well, start. Uh, go to the website, FA website, and and reserve whatever Lima Alphas you can come up with. And we are taking donations. <laughs> I'm, it's a good time to tell. We could have started with that. Well, if you're telling us to go get a new tail number, then <laughs> it's just a mere recommendation. <laughs> but no, I, I would like to see a, a Lima Alphas out there, and so reserve them. It doesn't cost that much to reserve them, but uh, donations, I'm sure, would be welcomed. Yes, we we are almost to our goal, so we're 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 close, but we are still um, trying to encourage other organizations and folks to support us. I have no doubt that they will. Ladies, thank you for joining us. Uh, and I say that literally because you have ladies on your shirts, so I, I'm not going to offend anyone by saying ladies. But good luck with your uh, uh, blue skies and tailwinds for your trip. Uh, and I think that it's going to be uh, fun to hear how this turns out and who wins. Uh, 52 racers, at, and there may be more. There could be a couple more. Okay, well, we're going to watch it. Keep that, keep that fuel going through the tubes. <laughs> Thanks, Rochelle. I'm gonna thank you. Shake your hand. I'm going to look at you guys and thank you. But we're going to wind it up here for this uh, segment of the interview. And I've been Coleman, your anchor host for the Florida Aviation Network, 48th annual Sun and Fun International. It's not flying, it's International Expo now. I keep messing that up. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Lights, soon to be Gene Conrad. Take it easy. We'll see you next interview. <laughs>